Hello, my name is Larry Clark. I'm the Director of Clinical Affairs for Pulp Dan Corporation, and it's my pleasure to bring you Activa and how it mimics nature. Welcome. The first thing I'd like to say to everyone is that bioactivity is for the patient. That's who this really benefits the most. They're the real beneficiaries, if you will. It's so difficult for the dentist to tell bioactivity from his regular diagnostic means. So there's a lot of trust involved here, if you will. So what we want to do is we want to go deeper in to the technology and what we're trying to do so that you can understand. We can all understand what the real benefit is for this patient. Thank you. So what is Activa? Activa is a bioactive material that has bioactive fillers and resins that mimic the physical and chemical characteristics or properties of tooth structure, thus providing the most unique restorative benefits on the market today. Activa has been on the market for six successful years and has attained dozens of international and domestic acknowledgments for its, uh, its abilities to do what, it, what we claim it does. And this is not just coming from the clinical community, it's coming from the scientific community. And the great benefits of Activa are helping first and foremost to solve the number one problem in, for failure of restorations, which is leakage. So helping prevent micro leakage. Also the release of calcium, phosphate, and fluoride, all the minerals that the tooth has and, and we need to work with with Activa. So it helps also with the shortcomings of adhesives. You know, studies have shown that Activa can have a real benefit on MMP response from adhesives and also in the total etch technique in extending the health of our, our bonds. So Activa gives the confidence for success like no other composite, no other glass ionomer. So why is there a need for bioactivity? Why has anyone even looked into it? And again, as I said earlier, it's to solve really the number one problem for failure in dentistry, which is leakage. You know, Thomas Edison said, I failed my way to success. And many of us think of that in very positive ways. But let's think about it this way. Composites fail from the inside out and glass ionomers fail from the outside in. The question would be, what would you rather have? We all know that when a glass ionomer fails, you just have to replace it because the tooth structure is still good underneath. But when a composite fails, there's a tendency for caries to be there. There's a tendency for the next preparation to get much bigger and deeper. So how do we deal with this? How can we find a balance that will work for all of us? Activa fits the most accepted definition of bioactivity. The concept of bioactive materials was first introduced in 1969 by Dr. Larry Hinch in developing uh, coatings for hip implants of calcium um, coatings so that there could be a better integration, if you will, with bone. And his definition, it goes like this. A bioactive material is one that elicits a specific biologic response at the interface of the material which results in the formation of a bond between the tissues and the material. To me, the most important aspect is that it elicits a response from the surrounding dentition or the surrounding tissues. That means the body is responding to it. The body is responding to it in a positive way. And that's what we're after. We're after Activa to get the body to respond to it and work with it for success. So to summarize, the benefits of bioactivity are that it directly addresses the primary reason for failure of restorations, leakage, and the potential remineralization and margin sealing with an ionic recharge, and that the tooth becomes part of the bonding and sealing process, and that the materials we call Activa are active and they're not passive in the oral environment. They're actually doing something. And very important to note, they're biocompatible. Recently, we started uh, using biomimicry as uh, a way to help uh, all of us understand more of how we're trying to work with nature with these new materials that we've developed. So biomimicry 
definition is viewing nature as a role model and a teacher. And that's what we've done. We've simply become students of nature, simply become students of what's happening inside the oral environment, inside the tooth, in virtually every respect you can think of. Because nature's already solved many of the technology problems and sustainability issues that we face today. We must learn from nature, not about nature. We must use it, let it be a teacher. We must imitate nature's processes. And for all of us who are so protocol driven, why not understand the protocols of nature and how it works and then work with it? So we're not about results. We're about the processes. And then biomimicry is the design and the production of materials and structures and systems modeled on biological entities and processes. So simple, hard to follow. So biomimicry teaches us to pay attention to function and then form can follow. So biomimicking function creates a natural possibility. So more we imitate nature, the more the natural processes can take place. So Activa's resin, first and foremost, uh, like the tooth structure, is hydrophilic. It allows water and ions to come and go, charge and recharge. That's the first thing that's necessary for uh, Activa to be what Activa is, is to allow ions and, um, and water to move freely without degradation. There's also a patented rubberization in Activa. We are very proud of this patent that we uh, achieved in 2008. So what was the purpose? The purpose was to rubberize the resin to try to come close to how dentin absorbs shock and how stresses can be relieved during the, uh, while, uh, let's say, an MOD, you still have all your cusps moving. Wouldn't it be nice if you had a composite material that was also flexing or uh, adjusting to those, to those forces as the tooth is still doing what it does, moving? Composites don't move. Composites don't absorb shock. They transfer it. That's the beauty of what this uh, rubberization does in Activa. It gives it more like a dentin-like response. And then there's this nucleation process where the actual uh, nucleation or the appetite formation is taking place on the surface of Activa, just like it would in the, in, on any surface, with the minerals and the ions coming from the tooth not from Activa. Activa is simply setting up a, a nucleation site for the ions of the tooth to be attracted to and then form its own appetite on that material. All of these attributes address failure of composites and should lead to longer lasting restorations. So how do we pull all of this together, bioactivity and biomimicry? Well, let's start with mimicry, mimicking nature. What a beautiful thing. And working with and learning from nature is our best option for reducing the failure rates of restorative materials today. Activa has captured the most important aspects that a restorative can have for longevity and ease of use. We don't talk much about that, but Activa is very easy to use. And Activa's revolutionary approach to restoring teeth is unparalleled. There are so many ways that you can use Activa for the benefit of the patient. It's yours to discover. The future looks like bioactivity and definitely the future looks like Activa and all of its siblings to come. Take care.